Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about all or nothing thinking. And I want to talk about how it pertains to politics. But first I want to start talking about psychology, because that's where this concept arose. The idea of all or nothing thinking, which can also be called black and white thinking, it's like a thinking fallacy, a logical fallacy, or an error of reasoning that uh, arises when you have something that you're thinking about that is really complex, but you try to force it into two simple categories. This comes up a lot in depression, like a co common problem that people have when they're depressed, and this is something that I've done, is they'll think about certain situations, or they'll think about themselves as a whole, in terms of either success or failure. So, like, say I go into some situation in life, and it doesn't turn out the way I want. Uh, it could be anything from, like, a school situation where I'm taking a class, it could be a business situation, so like, I run VT, and I've had this come up in my head when I'm thinking of ways to market the website, market and promote it. So it doesn't turn out the way I want. Like, say I don't get the grade I want on the test, maybe I fail the test, or maybe I put energy into some marketing attempt and I don't get the results that I want. So I might think, oh my god, this is a failure. I'm a failure. I failed at doing this thing. But the thing is, the real world is more complex and it doesn't really work like that. Like, when you attempt a task, if you don't succeed at it, you're still accomplishing something. You're still getting something out of it. And I think one of the biggest things is that you're learning and you're getting practice at doing something. So, like with my example in Rate T, when I failed to achieve certain goals marketing the website, I got useful information about what doesn't work, and I also got a little practice doing something, developing skills that I could then apply to something else. In the example of academic stuff, I actually failed a course in undergrad, in my major. And you may say, like, that's kind of bad. Uh, it is kind of bad in a sense, but I think it gave me an interesting perspective on school that I think helped me to understand and better empathize with other people. Because I'm someone who I tended to do pretty well in college, and I think sometimes it was a little bit hard for me to relate to people who struggle a lot more than me. And having that experience, it's something I can talk to other people about, I can use it to relate to their experience when they're struggling too. I think it was good for me in the sense of being able to relate to other people. So it's like, it might look like a failure, but in a different light, it's actually one of the most valuable successes I had in my academic career, certainly. Which is really weird to think about, but that's how the world works. It's not this sort of simple thing where you can just say, oh, this is good, this is bad. And I think one of the secrets to getting through life and to living in an empowering way is to see the benefits in failure, and see the good things in a bad situation. And this relates to overcoming depression. Now these ideas that I've explained here are all pretty mainstream. So, um, if you go to a good psychotherapist who's trained in cognitive behavioral therapy, they will probably be able to communicate these ideas to you, and there are self-help books and things that deal with these. There's tons of stuff on the internet. I really rarely, though, see this same reasoning applied to politics, and to political dialogue, political discussion, and the political process. And this is what I want to do in this video. I want us to apply that same concept, this concept of all or nothing thinking, um, to political dialogue. If you look at the political dialogue, especially this dialogue that's happening right now in the US, you see a lot of all or nothing thinking. And if you sort of go from what I was talking about earlier to what I'm talking about now, it's kind of painfully obvious. A lot of it takes the form of this sort of, you're either with us or against us. Like in left-wing circles, you will hear the phrase, you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. I've heard that a lot. And I think this is an example of all or nothing thinking. It's the idea of placing a stance or an argument, or even a person, putting them in a box. They're either good or they're bad. And people are really complex. I want to give the example of racism, because I think that's an issue that is pretty complex, and that's an issue where I see this all-or-nothing thinking. Like, you have this whole sort of, like, 
Black Lives Matter and you have Blue Lives Matter, this sort of sometimes I see like trolling behavior in this whole debate, and there's this sort of tendency to push pe put people in boxes. And I think I'm going to talk about the left because that's what I'm, I'm closest to. So I obviously, I don't like institutional racism, and I acknowledge that it exists. And I see people that don't. And I think there's this tendency to see the people who disagree with some of your ideology and to be like, oh, they're the problem. They're the bad guys. Like, I'm part of the solution because I'm supporting Black Lives Matter, or I'm saying the right things, or whatever, and these other people are not saying the right things, so they're bad. I think it's really important for us to kind of put a damper on that sentiment. I think that sentiment is really destructive, and I want to talk about several re reasons why. One of them is that we all deal with internalized institutional racism, to use that example. I think the same thing is true for all sorts of different systems. But if we sort of see ourselves as good, as like the good guy or whatever in a situation, that's going to blind us to our own ways in which we are actually not necessarily taking the right side on an issue. So like, yeah, maybe I support Black Lives Matter, but that doesn't mean that I don't have other types of internalized racism that I need to root out. Also, just because someone says some things that are politically incorrect or insensitive or even outright untruthful on the matter of race, doesn't mean that that person is all bad, even on the issue of race. Um, and I've seen this, like, I've seen examples of people who they're saying some racist remarks and suddenly they cut themselves off and they're like, oh my god, I said this thing and it was racist, and it's like, okay, that person has a level of self-awareness about racism that exceeds that of some other people. Because I've also heard other people say worse remarks and not cut themselves off like that. Um, that's just one of many examples. I think the point is that people are really complex, and you can always find some examples of how it could be worse and it could be better. And I think if you're wanting to get through to people, if you're wanting to advance an issue, it's more fruitful if you see people in complex ways. Lastly, I want to talk about the sort of polarization, and I want to talk about respect, and I want to talk about influencing people. If you think in these black or white terms, uh, like using this all or nothing thinking, if you see someone else as the problem or the enemy, you're cutting them off from you. You're cutting off your own ability to influence that person. And I think that's one of the biggest dangers of this way of thinking. I care a lot about influencing people, and I often most care about influencing the people whose viewpoints are the most damaging, like who are doing the most harm. Those are the people that I want to get through to the most. And if I, if I see them as the problem or the enemy, that's going to come out in how I talk to them. I'm not going to be as respectful to them, I might not listen to them as much, because I think, oh, they just believe false things, why would I want to listen to them? And if I'm not listening to them, how am I going to influence them? Because they're going to tell that I'm not listening to them, they're probably not going to want to listen to me, it's just not a good ground or foundation on which to start any kind of relationship. So, I think that if you can get out of this all or nothing thinking, and you can see the, the fact that you have flaws in your own way of thinking, and that other people who you might really strongly disagree with might still have some good points, I think that that's a really great foundation for influencing people. It's also a great foundation for learning from people. Uh, yeah. So, I really wish we could approach politics more in this way. And I think one of the, the easiest ways to start is to learn how to recognize all or nothing thinking. It definitely has a lot of evidence in psychology behind it, in, the, in terms of like, if you learn to identify and overcome all or nothing thinking, it is helpful for overcoming depression and being happier and more mentally healthy. And I think that if we would apply that same concept to political dialogue, we would have a healthier political system, and we would start seeing better results. And that's what I would like to call you to do in this video. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, do you have examples of this? Do you have any questions about anything that I've said? Yeah, please comment if you have anything to say. Thank you!